Christ in it, right? In Benzi. Uh, a very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasika. This time around, we want to speak about state of rugby in the country ahead of the election slated for Wednesday at the RFUA grounds. Of course, remember the polls were supposed to take place yesterday, but they had to be adjourned due to something probably Malimu Kikechi Kombo will share with us. Of course, it's the current Kenya Rugby Union director in charge of youth development and is seeking re-election in the next week. Paul, of course, Barry Silla is also still with us. Good to see you, Malimu. How are yeah. you doing? No, I'm okay. Yeah, thank you and uh, good to see you again. Yesterday the there last were time supposed you are... to be polls, but you know, adjournment yeah. happened. What led to this? Uh, you know, there was an issue of uh, the sports, uh, the sports di uh, dispute tribu tribunal. And uh, we were supposed to do some uh, paperwork, and I think that one was uh, done. But okay, they, we didn't be able. Chairman didn't be able. Was not able to complete yesterday. Uh, but I think by Monday uh, everything will be okay. Then uh, we'll now move on to Wednesday. So that's why I now forced the chairman to uh, uh, do the adjournment of uh, yesterday's session, the AGM. Now next week it will be okay, and uh, the union move on. Uh, from where it started. You know, we have the, the members of the board, their term is coming to an end uh, by 30th. So next week, uh, the once election is done, thought everything now will be okay. Then now the board can be able to consider it and move on. But already we have the chairman, uh, that's um, Tai Sasha, uh, who's uh, moved in as an opposed. And then we also have uh, the straight treasurer, Aroni, uh, who is also back. So it's our prayer that uh, <coughs> the union now moves on from where it is. And actually now the chairman gets the, the right board members. I think the affidavits will make the right decision to elect the, the, the right people so that once the chairman will be able to get the right board, things will be able to move very fast. Uh, you know, rugby has been doing well and it's one of the most respected games in the country and uh, it has a huge following across the country. And also we got the game has grown. And uh, in terms of development, what I have done is that to, just to assist uh, make sure that the game grows across the country and also we have the also the, the, the on some of the youth so that they can be able to be the feeder group of this particular team across the country. So once next week everything is done, now we'll be able now to carry on because we have um, paperwork already there, but the biggest issue has been uh, in terms of sponsorship. And once the sponsors now come back, because once the election is done, definitely our sponsors will be able to be calling and they'll come back and they'll be able to pick some of uh, the programs and uh, continue with them. Barry, as yes. scribes, of course, we've covered all these people seeking to vie for various positions. Alexander Sasha Mutai has been there, yeah. he's a, been a mainstay mm. as far as matters local rugby is concerned. He contested mm. like thrice before, but yeah, this yeah. time round it's been successful for him yeah. going and opposed. Remember, he opposed Richard Omuela in 2016 yeah. and was defeated. Yeah. And so, yeah. as you know, yeah. uh, the outgoing chair, yeah. Odor Gangla. Yeah. I don't know, what do you make of? You know, Alexander Sasha Mutai now rising at the helm of KRU chairmanship and the agenda he has had for the yeah, sport. I think Sasha is an insider uh, and a rugby head. Um, it will be interesting to see because now, traditionally in elections in sports Kenya, there's, to get somebody going on a post is quite rare. For him now, it's an easy breeze. Uh, but now his agenda going forward, uh, that is the main thing. We're looking at the chairman, who is the face of the of the organization, what is Sasha going to, you know, bring on, on, on the table to, to drive the agenda of Kenya rugby forward, not only for the teams like Shuja and Simbas, but also develop uh, tournaments for clubs, uh, even for women, women rugby. Uh, for me, my view, my long-term view is, how is Sasha going to, first of all, bring, uh, on, uh, bring heads together, uh, unite the, 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 the officials, and also, once the elections are done, talk as a unit to bring more sponsorship and make the visibility of rugby bigger. That's uh, how I, I view uh, my, my intention uh, or how I view Sasha's regime going forward. He's been here before and probably yeah. we shall be looking forward to see him mm. in the studio again to share his agenda yeah. and the colorful blueprint yeah. he has had for Kenyan rugby. Yeah. And Malimu, now in your own personal capacity, you've been in charge of youth development at mm. Kenya yeah. Rugby Union as the director and you're seeking re-election. And I've seen it's a, mm. a, a long list of those looking forward to challenge your candidate alongside John Kilonzo, who yeah. is also the incumbent. Yeah, sure. I don't know. What... what what makes you more suitable for re-election? I think we're there. 
uh, for the last four years, and uh, we've we've done what we've managed to done. But there was a problem that uh, crops in that uh, COVID epidemic, because we had set our strategic uh, plan for the four season. But see now, in 2020, 2021, and partly of 2022, was much so much affected, and you find that most development stalled. We mostly, we are doing the online and uh, uh, the, the Zooms meeting. Uh, but you see now that one was not because actually they involves the one on one and most the fish because rugby is a physical game and guys are supposed to be in the pitch, and I think that slowed out things. So those that particular gap. Now coming back from the COVID, uh, we took time to catch up, but uh, as we move on to where we are now, we've been able now to realign ourselves. And the election now is just here. Once the election is done and uh, uh, affiliates make their decision, because they also see what people are doing and uh, uh, feel that uh, these are programs that we had set and we've reached out to them and we're working together to accomplish our mission as a, as a union. And uh, once they make the decision and uh, Sasha gets the, the right, the, the right uh, board members, now we'll probably consider again, then we'll be able to, to move on very well. Uh, despite that, uh, the biggest challenge with the rugby union has been uh, the sponsors. You know, the, okay, most companies are also affected by the COVID. And you see now, after COVID, also car these companies coming, coming back was uh, an issue because they could not be able to give the way they used to, uh, to, to move in and sign the contracts and uh, long-term contracts with the Kenya Rugby Union. Some of them were signing short contracts. Some of them could sign the contracts, but now when it comes to implementation, they pull out because they are also looking at the, the, the financial um, uh, so deficit that they are having in their particular institutions. Because they are well, well want to sponsor, but you see now, the COVID issue also really affected companies across the, the country. So that was the major issue. But uh, all in all, we have, uh, the, uh, like now when you check on my development desk, there are quite a number of programs we put place. It started by uh, moving the camps across the country for the youth, and I had uh, tasked uh, Paul Murunga by then, who was the coach for the Kenyan Simbas, and now he had come out, we had um, Namkos had come in. So he was moving across the country and getting this, getting the data for these particular players. And at times when the, the under-20 team uh, that now is preparing for Bades Cup and uh, World Junior uh, Trophy that Kenya is hosting in July here. So uh, when uh, national team coaches were wanting uh, like a flank of 5.2, you see we had data, but initially there was no data, that, that data in the Kenya, Kenya, Kenya Rugby Union. So you could be able to say that plays in that plays in Busia, another plays in Mombasa, and could come and fit in the in the team. And that's about the rugby because once we data the data don't lie, and that's what I brought to to to, uh, to the development desk uh, in terms of having these people developing boards, also the the young girls to be able to feed up the lioness team because we are looking at long term programs. Uh, initially, Kenya Rugby Union was not looking at the long term programs, but I told these guys we are looking at 2025, and also let us look at 20 September World Cup. Then 20, uh, 2031 World Cup and 2034 World Cup, which uh, guys that are going to play in 20, we should be able to prepare early. And that's why the other countries like New Zealand, Australia, they prepare. And you find that a uh, country like New Zealand, guys could travel to Queenlands, where they're having a tournament of 2,500 kids, just under 14 kids they are playing. And people could fly in with plans to come and watch this it's a huge tournament. Bulls, uh, Bulls just within the, 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 the uh, what, what we call the Gauteng province. You see, they hold also around 2,500 kids just within the, uh, the, the Gauteng province. So these guys are preparing themselves for 2034, 2038 uh, World Cup. So Kenya, if we don't have also prepare, we have these young guys playing rugby in primary schools. So then we cannot be able to compete these guys. By the time we start preparing, they are far much ahead of us. And that's what I was bringing into the development desk and telling them, guys, we need to start uh, this particular st stage. We get the data for these guys. Then now coaches start looking at them. So by the time... We come to this, but by the time now they move on to the ranks, we want the pathway of these uh, talented players. And once you have a lead coach met, uh, maintain the that of these young players, it'd be very easy for even the, 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 the national team coach now to get the right guys, put them in the camp and play. The issue about the national team is not to come and, uh, it's not to, to, to come and uh, coach a player, but that's what the problem that we do. We should be able to bring a player and fit that player in the team, just to show the player how to fit and play in a team but not to come and do basic uh, coaching. And probably when Mike Friday came in 2011 and I uh, said he was showing our national team players to, to pass. You see now, Kenya, he said, Kenya, we have a problem with passing the ball. that is something ball. basic that That's basic, know players will know at That should be done at yeah, tender age now. So we cannot be able to compete with those guys if we are doing basic things. But you see now, Kenya could go and still win. But nowadays, assume now, this thing has done earlier. Now here just to 
ask these guys to fit than to play. You can even call these players you meet at the airport if they've been invited for an invitational tournament and you will go and win that tournament mm. because now players across the country, they are, have all these skills and we know the, uh, we have the data we've already collected. It's just a matter of putting them together, showing them how to play together and they go out and win. So those are some of the things that are put on the development desk and I hope that the athletes make that shown well, then we'll be able to finish up the second term. You've mentioned about a critical element of feeder system and you know we've seen at the national team level Players are aging and some are announcing retirement, they are quitting the game. Andrew Amonde, former captain, Colin Sinjera, one of the all-time try scorers. Amfri Kayangi already left a few yeah. years ago. The likes of Kinabiko Adema, you know, Oscar Yodi, Osko Uma, several names to mention but a few. How have you been working collaboratively with Kenya's secondary sports schools association, KSSA? To ensure that you know we have new upcoming talent now filling the void being left by these veterans yeah i think uh, uh, when you look at uh, k triple is one of the major stakeholders uh, for kenya rugby union because i killed most of these uh, uh, the most of these players they come through the ranks of primary schools and secondary schools so what we've done we have introduced um, the what we call dampevu with the, the group of the OASES, and that's a program for primary schools. And actually, we were supposed to have, the election was just affected, but we were supposed to have a, a tournament here where we'll bring these kids from the primary, selected primary schools. There are around 55 of them just to have a huge tournament here, and then now we'll be able now to expand it to more schools. And even the more schools were calling, and the though they are. The criteria to select these schools? Okay, we're looking at the regions. At least oh. every region should have a school. And I uh, find that now when you look at also the, the ministry, the ministry wants the sports to get um, the, uh, across the country. Yes. And that's why we have selected schools and uh, the response is very good. So what we've also done is, uh, with the, the training of the teachers. We've trained the teachers, we've trained the teachers in terms of coaching, we've trained them, the teachers to, to be the referees, and we've also trained the teachers to be the SNC. But when you look at, in fact, when you, I was looking at the data of uh, the referee, the Kenyan, the Kenyan uh, referees, rugby referees, you find it a big chunk, around 60%, they are coming from the schools. They are, they are, they are teachers. And that, that's what we've done with the development uh, unit, where we've set up the programs where we go and uh, within the regions. We go out, we invite them for training. Then we also assess them. We also have uh, guys, the well, educators. They assess them and they give them the report. And they improve and they get opportunity also to uh, to have big matches. Also the nationwide the championship and also involved in terms of raving Kenya Cup. And that's the biggest thing that we've worked with, with secondary schools and uh, it's working. Even the coaching also. We We've taken and uh, now uh, on the development desk we've also done the SNC. You know that's something that's only done with the teams, but we also wanted to to be done in the with within the, the schools. And uh, there's a time when I was uh, working with the community rugby, we invited a team from South Africa. So these kids were under 14, but now they, these guys when they came they told us they want us to bring under 16. They because. What they had realized that uh, with them, they started conditioning their kids, uh, their players very early. But as we wait until probably after that's you know, the, after the school, that's where now we start conditioning. And that's where that gap is there. So we've also now realized that we need to also to have this s in in schools so that can be able to carry out the program. So when the player comes out, He's uh, have all the it's all around. He's done the S and C. He's done also the, the the player is conditioned well. And apart from the player being conditioned well, he's also familiar with the basic uh, rugby and he's also a good player. So we bring up holistic players. So when you feed them to nationwide, they go to universities and universities are playing uh, good rugby now. And the program is well across all the, some, quite a number of universities. Around 80, 90 percent of the university they are involved in this particular game. So now we will be able to have the right players. And uh, when you look at South Africa, they have uh, the varsity league. It's very competitive. And when you some of the players who are playing for Springboks, they have come from uh, the varsity league. But you see now, the program has started from where? Uh, from the schools. So we also want to make the school to be very competitive. And um, I've uh, seen what the incoming chair, uh, Alexander Sasha, you know, he's talking about the Kenya School uh, League. And you find that that's just a league outside the, the K-Triple-SA. And you find that now, if we are running that particular program, the teachers are the ones who will be involved in terms of running the program. The Kenya Rugby Union will just oversee the program. And it will be a massive, massive, massive league that will end up selecting the players. They will go and play for the invited leagues like Raven Week in South Africa and the, the, the Rankton in, uh, in, in Zimbabwe. So that will be able to give us players and uh, we'll be preparing for the national team players who are are skilled and we've given them exposure, good exposure in terms of uh, visiting uh, these developed countries and playing the games and winning. When they come back, our team will be excellent and even World Cup now will be an uh, easy path for us to qualify for the World Cup. Barry, while covering 
uh, school games, you yeah. know. Mm. Uh, there are several institutions that uh, have exhibited, you know, unwavering talent, mm. especially among the school-going kids, mm. like, you know, Laser Hill, Kagamega mm. High School, mm. St. Peter's, Mumias. Mm. And just, just a few months ago, mm. my neighboring schools, Butula, Boys and Koyonzo, mm. you know, defied all odds to win K triple S A mm. rugby school yeah, games. Yeah. Something, you know, that mm. was unexpected of them because we are used to the likes of, you know, Upper Hill, Kakamega, Kakamega you know, doing that. Mm. And what what's your insight regarding, you know, the involvement of schools in the growth mm. and development of rugby? I think and the continuity. Because we mm. get to witness yeah. this yeah. young talent at a tender age, mm. but suddenly they just vanish. There is no program to check over their mm -hmm. progress yeah i think uh, from what malimu is saying the, the 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 program laid out or the blueprint part of the blueprint by sasha mutai uh i think we can call him Ch chairman elect for now uh, is that if we go to the base and build programs through schools and for for a country like kenya where we don't have a lot of academies um, i think schools are the best base and then now once we develop them, let's say, from primary or secondary form one all the way to form four, and uh, then there's uh, the pool of players who can now be going to, s to universities or colleges, it will be the best because then now we, we are able to, 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 apart from starting from a young age, to track the, their growth. Yes. Uh, and tracking growth is very important because now you see from this point to this point, what has this player or this young person learned? Uh, and so this will be a feeder program naturally, even to Chipukizi, or sorry, the Chipus, uh, and then all the way to to the top level of Simbas. Uh, and, 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 and tournaments like Prescott uh, Cup is very key. But also KSSA, KSSA helps uh, because it's a nationwide thing. We will not only, for example, rugby depend on Nairobi School, Pudge, or Lenana School, or Kakamega High School. We will even Maseno school will go beyond you'll get like you said Koyonzo, things you never even yes. knew would happen uh, and this is uh, one of the reasons why we will not see uh, a preserve where let's say Nairobi Nairobi is a preserve of rugby now there's nothing like that if K, even yeah, even if KRU K triple S say just collaborate and make sure this growth program and continuity um, continues, I think we will have a pool of many, many players that will act as a feeder to, to, to our programs and will be world beaters. Yeah, because yeah. because established and heavyweight countries like South Africa, New Zealand, just yeah. like you mentioned, yeah. I'm sure they have got a huge pool of players exactly. and it gives, you know, the head coaches a selection dilemma. Yeah. And like, I don't know whether that one applies to our situation here in Kenya. Well, we, we, are, we are moving there because when I came to uh, the office as a development director, I had now to put that in place whereby we need to have a huge, uh, we need to have a huge pool of players and we also need to have that data. And the coaches will be accessible to that particular data in terms of when they come to training, they already have a conceived uh, uh, data. So when it comes easy uh, for them to play. But now when you also look at the K triple SA, I think we also have the challenges with the schools, especially when the, the principals, you know, we have the principal who have the passion with the game. Mm -hmm. And now when you look at Koyonzo, why? Koyonzo is overtaking Kakamega. Kamega Munish uh, was transferred to a school here. Uh, that's in Nanyuki. Nanyuki boys. Nanyuki yes. boys, yeah. So, but that guy had a lot of passion, and you see, football Kamega was known, rugby Kamega was known, yes. and they were national champions for many years. Uh, now the guy who's coming, you find that they might be having a bias on a certain area. Mm -hmm. na, na, na Bongolo left. Uh, Cosmos. Yeah, yeah, he left uh, this school. St. Kita Joseph's? No, there's a school there in, uh, in Kitale. Uh, Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony. Yes. Now he's in Mumia, so mm -hmm. probably if Saint Anthony cannot be able to maintain it. Will go down, and if people Saint Peter's will come up in football. Mm -hmm. But Saint I Peter's was known as. Said of you. Yeah. So during your time at Muhuri, Muhuri Mushiri, Mushiri, yeah. the school was prominently doing very well, <laughs> and so is you know during the time of the current Kibra member of parliament. Yeah, Orero. Malimu yeah. Orero, yes. when he was at Dagoreti and Upper, Upper Hill, yeah. Upper Hill. Kam Kunji. I think. Yeah. The sporting of Michael Engineer Olunga was during his time, right, yeah, Barry? Yeah, true, yeah. true. But after those teachers get transferred or they quit mm -hmm. the profession, yes. then, you know, things yeah, go away. Yeah, things change, yeah. Like now, uh, a school to watch in, uh, in, in Western province rugby is Butler. Mm -hmm. uh, Butler is playing good rugby because Shimenga left Mumias and went to 
to to to Butler and now he introduced the game there. Butler was not known for rugby yes. or soccer, yeah. But see now it's the teacher now who is transforming the school. Mm -hmm. When I was there I went all the way to win uh, East Africa and it was elusive. The, the the trophy was very elusive for Kenya. Kenyan team went to Rwanda and they lost badly St. Peter's and Kangaroo. Then I asked the coaches what happened. They say that the pool was tough. I prepared the players mm -hmm. because I wanted to set the pace for Kenya. And once Kenya will set them for the pace, they will be able to win here. Because now I told him Kenya is a, is, a, is a rugby playing nation. We cannot be able to lose uh, East African games. If we lose East African games, then we are preparing the other teams to come and overtake us. So I went to set the pace and I went to Gulu with the young guys and uh, we won the trophy. And we brought it. In fact, the ministry guys were asking me, how possible is that Kenya we are doing well in the sevens and uh, you can't win East Africa? We lost in Rwanda. <laughs> this is very ironical. Yeah, it's very ironic. And I told him, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so Murimshiri was not a school that was known in terms of playing rugby, but because I had the passion and I knew uh, the areas that uh, it's key for us to win that particular tournament. And I won the tournament and I'm happy to see quite a number of these guys now. They're also joining the well, national team. Like, no, did you point <laughs> some players from other schools, not necessarily on academic purposes, but for the sake of winning trophies for the school? Oh, no, uh, you see, I was running the age grade program, the community rugby program. And these kids uh, started quite a number of them. You see now around 600 kids that we are bringing them every month. And this particular age grade we have under 14, under 16, under 18. Mm -hmm. So I was moving with these guys from, I had already known them. I trained them from under 10 and they were in primary school. So when they joined secondary school, they, they came to where I was coaching. So it was easy. They had read the basic. And that's why they're exceptional players because they had already come from the age grade, age, age grade program. And that's a part of the program that I was implementing with the Kenya rugby because it's like it was a case study uh, for, for for my for, for my for my project and this case study also for Kenya rugby and that's why uh, the affiliates uh, because what they did what they had done uh, was elected and when I ended there I was implementing that particular program but see now the COVID issue also uh, cropped in and we were not able to do much but I hopefully will uh, be able to do well and uh, we, got, we got a few minutes before we wind up the show probably we can talk about you know the upcoming leg in Hong Kong sevens Kenya rugby sevens national team under coach Damian McGrath currently preparing for the tourney, as we speak right now, place 13th. Yeah. Think relegation looming, and for the first time, mm. you know, it will be very unfortunate and embarrassing if we get yeah. relegated, you know, and uh, just after Hong Kong 7s, we will be heading into a fixture that is very memorable to us in Singapore 7s. Yeah. And during Singapore 7s in 2016, we all know what happened. Benjamin Ayimba, the late tactician, won it for us and brought it yeah. back home. Yeah. What's happening and what's not happening? I think uh, we had a challenge the way we s I said earlier about uh, the transition where we had um, some of the players now the old players in year and uh, Monday coming up and then in between the the, the, the leg also we have Ambaka who also called it off. Mm -hmm. But you see now the transition is key where we have the young players coming in. And Injera was very good in terms of mentoring these young guys. You know, he could bring them in and they fit because it's like uh, he understands the game. He knows how to press the ball. He knows how to bring it down, uh, how to uh, and how to balance. And yes, 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 yes and impression. Yeah, exactly. And that's why players like Onyala or Lindy were able to fit well Tabu. Uh, so that transition normally is there, but uh, now you can be able to see uh, that uh, these boys are coming up well, and uh, now they are trying to balance. See, now we've been getting a 5.4 points, but the last two legs we've gotten seven. And I know the Kenyans always, when it comes to when time matters, you know, they will always perform. And we hope that... Uh, We've seen the coaches have made up some changes. The Breton uh, experienced guy, Jeff Watch and Olindi, now they are on this particular leg. And I know we'll be able to, we are in a tough pool. You see, South Africa has won Dubai. We have uh, New Zealand uh, who have won. And then we also have uh, Ireland, which reached the finals in Dubai uh, with uh, South Africa. So it's a tough pool. But I know the Kenyan, uh, the players, the way they have trained, they're up to the task. And we'll be able to come up. Kenya has been a core team since uh, we joined seven, uh, the seven, uh, World 7 Series. And I don't think they, the boys will let it down. Do you remember the last time we qualified to make support us? <laughs> now we got South Africa, New Zealand in the same group. Yeah. Can we already count ourselves out? <laughs> now they have or to, we can pull a miracle? They have to believe. Uh, this, some of these teams you're mentioning, we've beaten them before. In, yeah. uh, in, but in, lately... Yeah, well, I mean, lately we've been ishish, but well, the boys have to believe, I guess. Yeah. South Africa, of late, they have not been well. You've seen how they beatable. play. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are beatable. We are on the same level now with yeah. Kenya. Yeah. And the way Kenya is uh, improving very fast. So, South Africa and uh, Ireland, 
I see if Kenya plays the way they are playing, uh, we'll be in uh, for the so main cup. All, all these old blacks. They're all blacks, yeah. The old blacks looked a bit uh, organized, mm. but Ireland is uh, 50 50. New, uh, South Africa is now, we're on the same level. And uh, if boys, we beat them there. Uh, that's in there, Vancouver, Vancouver yeah, yeah. Lake, yeah, yeah, we beat them. So it, the boys can replicate the same because now they have known how to how to just to maintain the, the pace of the game yeah. and uh, they'll, be, they'll be able to, to play well. So I feel, I still feel we have a chance. We have four uh, four matches to go, mm. uh, four legs to go, yes. and I know, uh, sorry, four legs to go, and I hope uh, they'll stand up, they'll organize themselves, mm. and be able to, at least if we go to to, 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 to the, the quarter, the main, uh, the main cup quarters, mm. then uh, Uruguay uh, doesn't do well in, in either two, then we'll be there. Uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be the top 12 and we won't go for the right. playoff. Still, yeah. still, even if we go for the playoff, yeah. uh, Kenya will be able to do well with the... I've seen the, for the last four teams, mm. uh, Kenya will always come at the top. Yeah. Jeff Oloj, just from you know, graduating as a policeman mm. and uh, now back to the team, I think he's one of the experienced players at the sevens as we speak now, alongside Johnston Olin, who has yeah. risen through the ranks. Yeah, yeah. He was on the sidelines yeah. now, back yeah. uh, again. I don't know, would they be of huge addition to the team? I think they bring a lot of uh, value in terms of the experience. They were out for some time, especially Oluochi. I think this is going to be his first game of, uh, this season. Uh, yeah, I think uh, integration is key. And uh, like Molima said, also transition for the future. We can't just think of tomorrow or the next leg. Uh, even if we survive, let's say get what, 12 points, uh, Still is not a good... It's a bit of arithmetics. Yeah, arithmetics now. It's now arithmetic. Still, it's not a very good show for Team Kenya, who is traditionally on the seventh place. But that also tells you teams have grown. Teams, there, there are teams that were, we, we used to beat Canada's of this world. Now I see where they are. Uh, because of the structures they are yeah, putting place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So transition is one of them. Development is another one. Infrastructure and sponsorship. Uh, if we get this all together, we will not be struggling like we are struggling. Uh, but to, 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 your, to answer your question directly, Jeff and uh, Olinda will definitely bring something to the team now that Ambaka has left and um, Colin Sinjera has left. Wow. And of course, we're going to come to the end of this interview. But before we do, Malimu, you got your camera. Yeah. Tell the stakeholders and affiliates why they should consider you for another four-year term come... Wednesday during Kenya Rugby Union's annual general meeting set for RFA grounds in a minute. <laughs> no, I think uh, the athletes know and uh, they've seen my work. They know the track record, the history of uh, Mr. Kikechi Kombo. And uh, when come Wednesday, I think we'll be able to work together and uh, move this game forward. Now that we have the chairman and uh, who has the passion also about the game, we have Gangla who has uh, done very well. He's been a team player. And uh, he said he's not going to seek for re-election, but he's done well in terms of uh, developing the game. So I hope uh, from Wednesday we'll be able to carry on. And uh, we hope that the athletes will make the right decision. They get the right bo uh, board members uh, who will work with Sasha to take the game uh, very fast and so bring the confidence of the sponsors to uh, the Kenya Rugby Union so that we can uh, develop the game. Asante San. Malimu Bartolomeo Kikechi Kombo, founder of Comras Rugby Football Club and currently the director of Kenya Rugby Unions in charge of youth development seeking re-election in the next week's AGM set for RFUA grounds on Wednesday. I remember the elections were supposed to take place yesterday but they had to be adjourned due to a court dispute. Sasha Mutai has gone unopposed as the president of KRU replacing Odori Gangla who has decided not to seek re-election due to personal reasons but obviously we wish them all the very best and looking forward to how that exercise will pan out. Continue talking to us, hashtag touchline Y255 was sick and Maxwell. Of course, the show is still underway until 3 o'clock. We're coming up next with a very sober man who means well for Kenyan football, Harold Ndege, former player for Task FC and also featured for the national team slightly. And of course, he will be joining us to talk about, you know, matters around the stars and the international break. And, you know, a host of issues regarding, you know, grassroots football development, capacity of our technical coaches and you know the selection dilemma we've seen what the exclusion of Benson Normal has uh, done in terms of opera on our social media platform so our host of issues don't go away continue staying tuned and keep talking to us interact on at Y254 channel at Wasike Maxwell the show is touchline don't go away stay tuned <laughs>